I'm Jill Hannon, and I recently graduated from Sac State with a degree in studio art, uh, recently, as in May of 2020, so just five months ago. And it's been a pretty exciting journey for me as I started my art degree in 1982. I've only just recently come to the conclusion that I'm an artist. I was always interested in drawing and dabbled a little bit here and there, mostly just with pencil or, you know, pen and ink. And I just kind of dabbled in that through high school and started at Sac State, you know, with with art in mind, but I really didn't have a direction. I didn't really consider myself an artist. Um, I never decided to become an artist. I think that um, being an artist just found me. When viewers see my work, I would expect that they're relating to it, something in their own personal lives. Um, my show, my exhibit is um, focusing a lot on just a lot of pieces of my life story. And though they may be unique to me, they really aren't unique. I mean, there might be some specific circumstances and details that I've lived through and had to cope with or that are part of my story. But I think there are elements uh, within my pieces that everyone can relate to. Um, as an example, uh, I have a piece called In the Grips Of, and it's a large scale drawing in pastel. And it's actually about alcoholism. I am recovering alcoholic. And when I first tried to illustrate or create a piece that talked about that time in my life, the imagery of, 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 of bottles and liquid and you know things like that were coming to me, but it just wasn't working. And I think it was because it was too specific. And so when I kind of kind of backed away from it, not thought so much about alcoholism, but the bigger theme of what alcoholism was in my life and how it affected me was that I had a grip on the bottle and alcoholism was gripping me. So I was able to create a piece that for me is about alcoholism and recovery and the answer to it. Um, whereas other people, they might be seeing that they're in the grips of something else in their lives. You know, they're gripping onto something that they're having trouble letting go of. Um, so in that sense, it's personal, yet I want the viewer to relate to it and put their own experiences into mine where we can communicate in that way. The original idea for my wit exhibit actually did change because the piece I was going to center that around was my piece called The Golden Ratio, which is actually a series or a, a, a grouping of paintings, uh, 21 paintings that are nine feet by nine feet. And I was exploring the golden ratio in mathematics and symmetry in nature. And that was to be the centerpiece. As I was kind of looking at the mathematics in the world, I, I teach math and amongst other things, um, but but I have a math brain. I have a, you know, a, a creative artist brain, but I also have a math brain and I see the beauty in numbers and the order in the universe. So I was creating this piece that had the golden ratio, which individual pieces do stand alone, but they don't exhibit well individually. It's, it's meant to be taken in as a group and it's nine feet by nine feet. The naming of my pieces um, in the golden ratio was quite an experience in and of itself because when I first had done these things, they were items in nature that were symmetrical. So we've got, you know, a starfish, an egg, you know, the part of an apple and a leaf, you know, all these things. And um, Professor Floor, Sarah Floor, said, you know, <laughs> maybe you want to do something else with these titles instead of just Apple, you know. So I was absolutely inspired by that. I'm a huge Beatle fan. Um, so I decided to match every piece with a song title um, from the Beatles. So every piece, uh, the, the one that's a little bit sketchy um, is of the owl's eye, and that is called free as a bird that was produced by the by the then surviving Beatles all but John Lennon it was an archived piece of music a song that he had written and halfway produced and then about 15 years ago or maybe maybe more maybe 10 years after his death so 30 years ago they went into the studio and they produced it so free as a bird is the owl's eye in that piece but everything else is a Beatles title So my piece, Past, Present, and Future, um, is how I was capturing this time in my life, returning back to school, that it had to be the perfect time. So I had a lot of pieces 
um, in an earlier show I did a year ago at the WIT that was on moons, the phases of the moon, because for me that was um, illustrating the passage of time. And so this, the one that I chose for this show to include um, past, present, and future, uh, because again, that kind of, it's a culmination, you know, so the, the top line is the past, and I did that mostly in sepia tones, like if you want to think about, you know, old photographs that have aged. And then the present was just done in like current pastels, and the future was done with deep blacks and really saturated, almost primary-ish rainbow colors. Um, so for me, that it's just another demonstration of the passage of time and um, the gratitude that I feel that I can express this time and to be able to look back on my life and say, you know, I've, I've, I've been through a lot and this has been something else for someone to contemplate the passage of time uh, in relation to the phases of the moon. <laughs> what I consider now my centerpiece for the exhibit is the last painting I did um, at the very end of the last, uh, my last semester was a, a self-portrait called Gratitude. And that is kind of, for me, it's the culmination of me telling my life story, getting back into art, becoming an artist, which still feels weird for me to say that I'm an artist. Um, and so for me, that's the centerpiece. Like you're gonna see all these pieces that, that illustrate trials and, and, and things in my life and then at the end, I'm just absolutely grateful, you know, for one to be alive, you know, to be able to kind of look at this kind of second half of my life. Um, I am an older student to, to look at. I've got like this new just uh, the second half of my life is going to be very different now that my husband and I are empty nesters.